Hey, welcome back to YT Finance, and today we are talking about Palantir Technologies PLTR stock. So we're going to be going over their latest price targets and price predictions, as well as their latest news update. And our first story we're going to dive into is how Palantir is planning to open their new United Kingdom-based headquarters, which is going to be phenomenal news for the company because they are looking to actually land more business from the NHS. And then we're going to move over to another deal that they have leveraged with Hertz to where Hertz is going to use Palantir's Foundry platform to effectively manage their overall vehicle fleet. And then finally, we're going to be going over the bearish case, which is the negatives, and the bullish case, which are the positives for this particular company, which will determine if Palantir Technologies is still a good stock to buy right now, considering the current stock market environment. So for more videos like this one, remember to go and smash that like button right now, comment your thoughts down below, subscribe if you are new, and without further ado, I say let's jump right into today's stories. Palantir Technologies, if you didn't know, is a big data and analytics company that serves both commercial clients as well as government agencies. Right now, the PLTR share price trades for around $7.91, while experts believe the company should be trading between $6 and $20, which it technically is right now, so we could assume that this company is fairly valued when we look at analysts' price projections. However, Palantir Technologies is actually hiring locals to move its staff from its London office in to the new outpost that they are building near the NHS. Palantir has significantly grown not only their relationship with different UK businesses, but also with the NHS themselves, to where many employees will now be located at that newer location. And according to this Yahoo Finance article, they are saying that Palantir is actually opting and trying to achieve another contract with the NHS. And this is what it says, and I quote, having an office in the North North would bring Palantir physically closer to the Leeds headquarters of NHS Digital and NHS England's national team as the firm vies for a £360 million or £404 million contract to build a data platform for the health service. And this is going to be absolutely phenomenal. I also want to say that last week, the department actually awarded Palantir a contract worth £4.5 million to continue its work that it has previously been doing for free since April. So clearly Palantir is integrating themselves further into the NHS and they are building even more relationships with it. And right now, they are mainly operating within the company to help allocate housing and resources to Ukraine. Ukrainian refugees. So overall, this is a very positive news update. And if Palantir does land that $404 million contract, that is going to be exquisite for this company and of course their overall stock price. We're going to move on to their next deal that they have recently landed and that they are leveraging right now with Hertz. And Hertz is a vehicle rental company that offers various types of cars, trucks, and vans to people who need rentals. And Palantir Technologies has actually formed this multi-year partnership with Hertz to enhance their customer experience as well as giving the company the ability to make data-driven decisions. The chief information officer at Hertz actually had to say this about the partnership and I quote, our partnership with Palantir enables us to harness our data in innovative new ways that will get our customers on the road more quickly, improve our cost structure, and reduce the complexities of operating a large fleet and as we continue investing in electrification. End quote. So clearly, Palantir is going to be paramount for the future success of Hertz as a company. I'd also like to point out that Hertz is using Palantir's foundry operating system to manage their fleet of over half a million million vehicles, and this would include multiple vehicles by Tesla. Hertz is doing a fantastic job in the current environment to give their customers the latest and greatest vehicles that they will need, including electric vehicles from Tesla. In response to this partnership, Palantir's COO had to say this about Hertz, and I quote, Hertz has shown their continued commitment to being an innovator in the market, including their industry-leading focus on electric mobility, and we are proud to help them along their path to digital transformation, end quote. So overall, this is another fantastic partnership, and even though I think that the next earnings report is not going to be that positive, I think the earnings report after that could definitely be positive, considering that they are continuously landing bigger and better contracts, both on the government side as well as on the commercial 
commercial side. So what does this mean for the PLTR stock in general? Well, Palantir has been a very speculative investment ever since the beginning, and there's much debate going on on whether or not this is just a meme stock or not. And I personally think this is a good company as long as you get this company at the proper price point. So what do I mean by that? Well, as you know, since their all-time highs, the PLTR share price has fallen by around 80% since then. However, the company can still be considered overvalued according to some metrics, which we will talk about when we go over the bearish data for this company. Now, bulls and people who like Palantir, which is the positive end, say that Palantir's PLTR stock and their share price will bounce back and deliver market-crushing returns to investors over the long run. And although that is possible, considering their very innovative technology, how far away are we from this giant upside in their stock price? Well, the person who's going to go over the bullish positives is Keith Noonan, who is a huge proponent of Palantir, particularly due to their high performance and amazing data analytics software that they offer to government enterprises, institutions, and commercial businesses. Palantir is literally positioning themselves, according to Noonan, as a long-term beneficiary of this trend where institutions as well as government agencies are looking for greater AI, machine learning, and data analytics technologies that Palantir can deliver to them. The company also appears to just be scratching the surface of their overall market share, which means that this company could definitely grow a long way into the future. Now, what I have a problem with on this particular company is that, yes, this is a phenomenal growth company and their technology is absolutely amazing, but the company is overvalued right now considering that their market cap is currently hovering at around 17 billion dollars realistically this company should be trading at a lower market cap than that but if you're willing to invest into this company at a slight premium then clearly you can make your money back and even more so palantir continuously finds success in both the commercial and government enterprises but particularly in the commercial sector to where they have attracted new customers as of quarter two for a total of 304 total customers. And that is roughly an 80% year over year increase, which is phenomenal. If they can keep this pace, hopefully this is going to reflect very positively on their overall revenues, which have recently decreased from a 30% CAGR down to a 25% CAGR. So hopefully they can get that compounding annual growth rate back up and more competitive, which is going to put investors at ease considering their overpriced stock price at the current moment moment. Palantir aims to actually make Foundry the go-to platform for running artificial intelligence and machine learning capabilities, as well as any analytics-focused application and or company that wants to purchase their services and or software. So overall, I think this is a good long-term play, but if Palantir is not giving you returns either this year or next year, then you probably don't have the right mindset to even invest into this company in the first place. The company is currently projected to become profitable in 2025. So, you're basically met with either investing now and waiting for 2025 until you actually get substantial returns, or you don't invest now and you wait until 2024 or 2025 to invest into this company. If you are invested into the company now, you really can't say that the company is good or bad until they actually make something of themselves, and especially if you're not a long-term investor. Now going over more of the bearish negative points on this particular company is Lou Whiteman, who is not a full bear on this company, but he does speak truly truth about it. For instance, he says that the company's software has the ability to do things that their rivals simply cannot replicate, and this gives Palantir a huge competitive advantage in their overall market. Now, despite this, he also correctly identifies that it's hard to call Palantir Technologies and their PLTR stock a bargain, even after the giant decline that it has experienced because the company is still trading at a premium. You are overpaying for the stock, and you are basing it off of the future growth projections. And in the current stock market environment that we are in right now with very high inflation that is going to hit growth stocks very negatively. He also, I think, unfairly compares Palantir to a defense IT rival such as Booz Allen Hamilton, but I really just don't like this comparison. I don't think Palantir is very comparable to Booz Allen. I would compare Booz Allen more toward Raytheon, Lockheed Martin, or other defensive contractors. Palantir is a defensive contractor, but they are slightly different. I would compare them to more 
comparable companies, but that is neither here nor there. Very positive bulls on Palantir would say that Palantir has a large commercial business and even a larger commercial business than Booz Allen. However, the author fires back by saying that the commercial potential does not justify the current premium, but I think in the future it definitely could, considering how I've always said that their commercial sector is going to outpace the revenues that they are bringing in from their government clients. And with both of these sectors together, both their government business as well as their commercial business, this company is set for long-term growth in my personal opinion. He also adds that Palantir is too good of a business to just disappear, so the company going out of business really isn't in the cards for this company, but the amount of money you could lose investing into this company prematurely is literally almost everything, so you need to keep that in mind and not to over allocate and take on unnecessary risk by overexposing yourself to this particular company too much. Right now, I have a 3-4% to allocation to this company, and I'm waiting for the company to drop lower in its share price for me to average down my average cost, and I don't really anticipate jumping on this company over a 5% initial allocation unless the stock price decides to start growing, which will force me to expand my overall portfolio. So this begs the question, should you buy Palantir Technology stock? Well, honestly, it depends on your personal risk tolerance and your investing strategy. Are you willing to wait for the next five years of potential losses to to see Palantir on the other end, or are you going to wait for the company to prove itself in 2025 when it's projected to become profitable before investing? It really just all depends on what you think of this company and its future growth prospects. But again, even after the sell-off, it's still somewhat of a speculative stock with a heavy reliance on stock-based compensation, which is a continued risk of overall share dilution. This means that the PLTR share price will be very volatile over the next few years, but again, I think over the long term, this could be a good company to hold in a very strong diversified portfolio and this is only for risk tolerant investors who understand how to operate in a proper risk management environment without overexposing themselves to unnecessary losses by investing into risky singular speculative growth companies such as Palantir. So I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Remember to go and smash that like button for more videos like this one. Subscribe if you are new and I will see you in the next YT video.